Some of the changes from the past that do make this original would include, number one, the fact that it's conditions-based, not time-based. So in the past, we've uh, timed our presence uh, on the calendar. Now we're saying we're basing it on conditions on the ground. When we achieve certain conditions, then uh, we will consider the next steps. That's number one. Second, I'd say, is the addressing of external enablement. And this was addressed very clearly by President Trump in a speech. Mm -hmm. And while these conversations with uh, Pakistan will occur in private, the president has put the issue on the table. He's also said, and I support, that we have great respect for the Pakistan people and for their sacrifice in the war on terror, but we must address this issue of sanctuary inside Pakistan. The third is that is a regional strategy. So you heard the president mention India, as well as uh, Pakistan and other nations in the region. So we need to address the entire region, and it's a whole of government approach. So this includes diplomatic, as well as military, economic, and other means. And uh, reconciliation is an important part of the strategy as well. So we know the sacrifice and the long hardship of the Afghan people for the last 40 years. And we are with you mm -hmm. and the Afghan people and the support for a peace and reconciliation process at the right time. We would like to see all of the nations in the region support the Afghan government and its mm -hmm. security forces. I think that Russia and Iran have common interests with the Afghan government. Number one is counterterrorism. Mm -hmm. Iran doesn't want to see Daesh spill over into Iran. Russia doesn't want to see Daesh spill over into Central Asia. It's the Afghan government and Afghan security forces that are fighting Daesh. Mm -hmm. So we would encourage those nations to support the Afghan government and support those security forces because the Afghan security forces are fighting a fight on behalf of all of the world to include Russia and Iran as well as the Afghan people. We're doubling the size of the special forces inside the Afghan security force. We're increasing significantly the size of the Afghan Air Force, and we're providing more advisors. Now, I won't get into specific numbers. I won't talk about where they're being employed because we're not going to telegraph our intentions to the enemy. Uh, the enemy just needs to know we're going to be bringing a lot more pressure to bear on them. And our hope is that the pressure that we bring to bear on the enemy inside the country, the pressure that's brought to bear on the external sanctuaries, the diplomatic dialogue, with Russia, Iran, and other neighbors will create conditions for a reconciliation between the Taliban and the Afghan government. Until then, we're going to keep maximum pressure on the enemy in order to bring about the day when we can have a conversation about peace and reconciliation for the Afghan people. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks a lot.